What up, y'all? I'm Brando, and today I want to talk about a really fun topic, which is how I learn and grow as a designer. Some context on me. Uh, I've been designing for close to a decade now. I started doing fashion design, but then really ran with physical real world product design, uh, where I designed over a hundred unique products for the brand Brando Moon, which is my own. Uh, and so here I'll even show you like physical real world, like metal products like, like this. Uh, I've also designed packaging like uh, for my coffee company, Lunar Coffee Lab. So some idea of like packaging. And I've done various different apps, websites, uh, we discussed clothing, and just all other facets of design, like logos and all that. I just really love uh, vis visual and like physical experiences and, and design, design thinking, design systems. So from all of that, I, I feel like I picked up on a few things that have helped me refine my design over time, and most importantly, how... I think about design, how I get inspired, how I come up with new ideas, how I research for, uh, for design and keep things fresh. Cause this is something can really be a struggle, especially for new designers is like, they feel like they have like one or two, maybe like one trick pony type designs that they turn to over and over again and they're struggling to branch out. So I thought today would be like a really fun way to talk about uh, design and design thinking and how to progress. So let's jump right into it. Uh, in no particular order, I just wrote down a couple different frameworks that really helped me uh, think about design, design methodology, and, and this uh, very fun, exciting topic. Anyways, the first one, get out there, see what's working. Uh, this is huge. You're, you're not really going to know if, if your design like, makes any sense uh, or could even have the potential to be something big, unless you go out there and first see what's working and i'm not saying copy anybody uh word for word anything like that but just like get out in the real world see what's on the shelf see what people are wearing look around have those like wide eyes and just uh like have a feel for where we are in uh design be it fashion design product design packaging uh, everything is a design experience and everything kind of speaks to each other which we'll get onto later but that's my first i'd say it's the most important is you really just, if to begin, just go out and start looking at design, as much design as possible in as many different contexts as possible. And that'll already give you like a much stronger sense of how you should go about design, or at least when you do go design, what fits, how it fits into the larger ecosystem of design and design experiences that are happening out there. So my next one, and it's kind of, kind of in line with this, is get curious. Note what draws your eye and ask why. So this is probably my favorite part of, to, of growing as a designer is I love to like just go into like maybe like a specialty grocery store or, or something like that or just a, a boutique shop and just see how are they stocking the shelves? Like what are they putting on the shelves? And what, from what they're picking and curating, what's really speaking to you? And this is going to help inform what kind of design you even like, what's natural to you, like what feels at home with you, like what really speaks to you. And I think more importantly, you should be asking yourself, why? Why did this product stick out on the shelves, uh, on the shelf in general? And what about it I mean, myself is, is drawing me to this design? And I think if you do that enough times, and so how I do that is whenever I see something that really sticks out, I take a photo of it. And then you can go back and look and start to see the patterns of designs that are sticking out on the shelves and appealing to you and start to get a sense of like, oh, like maybe this is what's like could really work for my designs. Like, oh, they all have this like similar color palette. Like maybe that's the color palette that's really working right now or speaking to me and I want to design in that kind of color system. And so you can kind of draw those comparisons, which I think is super helpful. Yeah, get curious, like s figure out what's drawing you and ask why deeply. Next, change lenses often, viewing micro versus macro. And I use the analogy of a lens here because I, I think it makes a point really well, which is like, if you can think about a camera and how you can zoom in or zoom out and how that totally changes what you're allowed to see, what matters, what's in the frame period, and the kind of like emotional responses you will get from uh, that frame of view. So the same thing applies when you're thinking about design. When I get stuck and I feel like I'm just kind of thinking the same 
design patterns or ideas over and over and I can't really break out into something new, but I really need to, I'll try to come at it from an entirely different angle. So it might be like um, working on a graphic and I like really, really, really zoom in and just focus on one little tiny part and like um, really focus in right there. Like that will ch eventually change how you're thinking about the whole thing. Or what if you like zoomed way, way, way out? How does the graphic look when it's really, really small? What still stands out and what's getting lost? And being able to like zoom in and out and view things from different perspectives or like just cutting a part of it, all these all things help inform your design. And they also trigger different uh, activations in your brain. So whenever you need like just a really quick shake up of thinking, just change your perspective and what you're visually focusing on can uh, unlock ideas and perspectives that you didn't even know were there. And they couldn't have been unlocked without you prompting that kind of thinking with a different point of view, a different uh, frame of mind. So that kind of leads to a more specific framework for how you can change your point of view or how uh, in or out or macro macro you're thinking about it. My next point here being think historically. Design is always speaking to something larger than itself. Um, this is really big for like it, it advanced level design. And I really noticed this uh, a lot with like some of the top designers out there. And there's one thing like I really, really liked about how Virgil Abloh was approaching his design, especially later in his game is he was looking at kind of a uh, design over time. Like he was reading like old texts about like old school uh, design houses when they first got started in like France and Italy and how that evolved over time. And he's thinking about design of like clothes from uh, different periods and uh, different types of people. And understanding these arcs can really help you figure out and understand like where you fit into the whole thing. Like when you throw up like a designer handbag and you decide to like do the zippers in a certain way, uh, every time you make that choice, you're speaking to a larger history of designing bags and just design and luxury period. And so being able to understand how those arcs of design happen over time, not only help you wait, make a lot more sense and appreciate what you're even designing, they can help inform like where do you want to go and what makes sense. Because sometimes people approach design by just trying to be like as random and spontaneous and different as possible. And it doesn't always stick. And a part of it, I think, has to do with its spot in the historical narrative of that type of design. Like if it's just way off the mark, people aren't going to quite get it and put two together. But if it's like a refresh of like a 1700 style design, it's like, oh, now it's anchored in something and it speaks to something. I think this adds a lot of weight, gravity and depth to any designs in any field. So understand that you are a part of a larger history of design, of humanity, of progress, and what you're building is a part of that. It comes from where, somewhere and is going somewhere. So looking at different timelines of history can really, really help supercharge your skills as a designer. The next one I have here is uh, <laughs> F a trend. What's, uh, what's the core value add slash feature? Um, so this is a kind of speaks to the historical thing is when things get, when you're a designer, and this is really popular when you're like younger or newer, really to any field, but especially design and business is you, you go after what's flashy, what's loud, what's hot right now. You just want to jump in and get a piece of it. You know, what's the trend? And there's a lot of value in, uh, speaking to the trend because, you know, that is a part of a historical arc. You know, we're at this point, this is the trend right now. And you want to add to that. And that can be a nice way to get like an initial boost. But there are downsides to trend chasing, which is that trends always change. And again, this is why the history is important because you want to know where that trend came from. And when it dies, what's what's going to happen next? Even if you, if you can even uh, predict. Some say like following trends is like trying to day trade the stock market. Uh, sometimes these trends are just random. They're just like virality and social network effects that are too complex to really truly make sense of. And they also die just as randomly. Like some of them go on for a long time. So there's others don't. And so uh, following, just basing your designs off of just what's trendy means you're always going to be in a rat race. And it does always make you a little vulnerable to when the trend ends. And let's say you double, just double down on that trend. You just put up, like produce like 500 jackets on that trend. Now that trend's over and nobody wants them. 
and it's just too trendy and specific and people don't want to deal with that you're just out like the amount of money you put into like 500 jackets and that really sucks and that's why I, I really made the subline here. Yeah, what's the core value add or feature that uh, is what you're trying to portray here? And this is a, also speaks to a deeper point in design is that the whole point of a designing experience is that you're trying to improve the experience through your design, which should add more value. Either your design like made something expensive cheaper and democratized it, Maybe it like improved and improved the, the quality of the experience. And that's kind of like what luxury is supposed to be about. Um, though it can get trendy and brandy and all that stuff. But always, always focusing on like, what is the core experience that people want and making sure you're delivering on that and not just a trend. That's how you build a uh, design that lasts for the long haul. And it's always focusing what is the core need and i guess we can make the stock market analogy again there too is like there's you can day trade off of like um, momentum and swing trading and just what's the hot stock of the day you know meme stocks or you can say like is this business that i'm investing into fundamentally sound and is profitable and is producing a product that people value and value over time and so there's some sort of like deeper core uh, strength and value that this business is bringing to its customers. And I feel like that's ultimately not as fast and exciting as a way to make money, but ultimately a lot more safe and grounded in reality and likely to last. Uh, and so that leads me into my last point here is a little bit of a discussion on kind of thinking about value, uh, value in design. And so my last point here is get psychological. Think about senses that are being activated, the emotions triggered from your design, and the, the user journey. So what is the experience of the user with your design throughout the experience of finding it, engaging with it, and ultimately being done with uh, design, the design, the product, the service, uh, the consumable, the clothing, whatever it is. It's, it is a larger experience. And so being able to think about what the underlying motives someone has for wanting to engage with your design is another skill that is a lot more of like first principles thinking esque and is more about just what is the core core value and getting down to it and so i think like senses is, is a good way to think about it like how do they uh, what's it feel like when they touch your product if it's a real world product if it's like a website or a graphics it's like um how what kind of uh, how are the colors like activating the certain emotions in their brain is it like a red notification and like really draws attention and causes a little bit of anxiety right now um and then eventually fatigue if you're just using that bright bright all the time is it like a yellow and orange and it's more calming and you want them to feel more soothed from having experienced your design so thinking about the kind of uh emotions that your design is invoking and making sure it's in line with what you actually want them to feel when they're experiencing your design and hopefully you want them to feel something at all if you're not thinking about how um it like the touch uh or the sight or just the how it gets their heart racing these like kind of deeper um meanings and feelings to your design i think you're really missing out on a big part of what design is all about and why else doing their like user journeys it's like the user is on a hero's journey and they're trying to achieve something or they want to get something out of the world and your design should be a part of that. Like, are you designing a sword for them to like chop through the jungle and you know, you're a part of a larger experience. You can think about like how the design of that sword hilt like speaks to their sense of uh, adventure and excitement and being the person who get things done. And so I think that's like super, super, super important and is gonna outlast any trend. Like if your product fundamentally calms people down makes them feel more in the moment satisfied and that's what you want them to experience that's a win and even if maybe the design on face out of context might like look or feel kind of weird if it's reaching and giving them that emotional response that they're looking for that's good design and i think it's more important to think about it from the psychology that you're unlocking from them engaging with design than uh, like being a part of any trend um, or feeling like it's cool or it's not like weird or whatever kind of blockers they're getting away from just providing the core correct experience of the design. So 
that's that's a lot of them there. I'll go through all them one more time, just like just to summarize. Uh, so we have six here. Get out there, see what's working. So that means like get out in the world, or maybe it just means like rip through a million websites, <laughs> like get out into the internet, uh, whatever it is. But get outside yourself, get inspired, see what's going on uh, right now, so you have some context. Two, get curious um, and figure out what is uh, eye catching to you, because if it's eye catching to you, it's probably eye catching to other people as well. So, and take note of that, like understand what's drawing your attention and why, and get curious, ask yourself like, why, why is this design really appealing to me? Uh, next, change lenses often, you know, view things from a really far out, really, really close, normal, upside down, um, scattered, like throw your design in places you never thought of before, just to see it how, in a different lens and how that can activate new ways of thinking and approaching the design. Think historically, understand where you fit into the larger discussion that's happening around that particular object, website, or service. Um, yeah, screw a trend. Don't be oh, hyper-focused in trend. Don't make your core value uh, just being the first onto a trend and always jumping on the trend. You need to think past trends. You think about what's the core value, which gets me to my last point, uh, which is, yeah, get psychological. Think about the feelings, emotions, of your user and the journey that they're on, how your design speaks to that. So understand the underlying motives of the people that are engaging with your design. If you can do just one of these things, I think you'll see a big difference in design. If you can do all of them, I mean, I think you're really gonna supercharge your success um, or just chance of success. And at the very worst, just uh, come up with a lot of new ideas, which will then maybe lead on to the next idea, onto the next idea, which really meets the one that really pops off and it's really speaking to everybody. Uh, but yeah, you always got to keep trying. You always got to change your perspective. Um, the more you can learn and the more you can get down to the core essence of why what you're building matters and who it matters to, the better off you're going to be as a designer. So that's how I think about design. Um, I think design is really fun on a core part of existing. Everything's designed. This couch, this light, this uh, this plant, this... I mean, it's, it's everywhere. And the more... The better you get at design, the more curious you are about it, the more you're going to see design everywhere and take note of design in all aspects of life because it all informs each other and it all improves your thinking and your designs over the long term. I guess that can be a bonus, but <laughs> uh, that's all I got for today. If you have any design questions, throw it in the comments. If you design for a living or for a hobby, throw some links. I want to see y'all's designs. I think that'd be really fun. Um, and again, if you're ever interested in any of my designs, I designed for Brand the Moon, Lunar Coffee Lab, and it's just kind of uh, different one-off projects. So I hope you learned something today, and we'll talk again very soon. Brando out.